And the seven angels, who had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound the trumpet. And the first angel sounded the trumpet, and there followed hail and fire, mingled with blood, and it was cast on the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all green grass were burnt. And the second angel sounded the trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was cast down into the sea, and the third part of the sea became like blood. And the third part of those creatures died, which had life in the sea, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Revelations chapter 8, verses 6 to 9. Sister Lucia said, that the Farima message is about the apocalypse. In the last Farima operation, on October 13, 1917, the famed miracle of the sun was witnessed by 70,000 people. They saw the sun, which was a mass of fire, began to spin rapidly downwards earth as if to cross and kill all the people. This was reported in the local newspaper, Osecolo. The several important people gave varying accounts. A priest, Father Joaquin Lorenzo, testified, I looked fixedly at the sun, which seemed pale and did not hurt my eyes. Looking like a ball of snow revolving on itself, it suddenly seemed to come down on earth in a zigzag, menacing to crush and destroy our planet. Terrified, I ran and hid myself among the people who were weeping and expecting the end of the world at any moment. A professor of natural science from Coimbra University, Dr. Almeida Garrett, had this to say, the sun whirling seemed to loosen itself from the firmament and advance threateningly upon the earth, as if to crush us with its huge fiery weight. The sensation during those moments was terrible. Dr. Manuel Pormigao, who was a priest and professor of Santarim Seminary, said the following, The sun at this zenith appeared in splendor and began to revolve vertiginously on its axis like the most magnificent fire wheel you could imagine, taking on all the colors of the rainbow and sending forth multicolored flashes of light, producing the most outstanding effect. This sublime and incomparable spectacle, which was repeated three distinct times, lasted for about 10 minutes. The immense multitude overcome by the evidence of such tremendous prodigy threw themselves on their knees. When the sun hurled itself towards the planet Earth, the people started screaming helplessly for fear of dying. Sensing it was the end of the world, both atheists and believers confess their sins before God, kneeling and begging for His mercy. The whirling and burning sun, a mass of fire colliding on the planet Earth, revolving at 67,000 miles per hour around its solar axis, miraculously stopped, which could have burned and killed all the inhabitants. Why was this so? The visit of St. Joseph was pre-announced by Our Lady of Fatima in her fifth apparition on September 13th. She said to the children, Lucia, Francesco, and Jacinta, In the last month, on October 13, I shall perform a miracle so that all may believe in my apparition. St. Joseph will come with a baby Jesus to give peace to the world. Our Lord also will come to bless the people. In her own words, Sister Lucia describes seeing St. Joseph during the miracle of the sun. She said, opening her hands, she made them reflect on the sun, and as she ascended, the reflection of her light continued to be projected on the sun itself. After Our Lady had disappeared into the immense distance of the firmament, we beheld St. Joseph with a child and Our Lady robe in white with a blue mantle beside the sun. St. Joseph and the child Jesus appeared to bless the word. 
for they traced the sign of the cross with their hands. When a little later this apparition disappeared, I saw our Lord and Our Lady. Our Lord appeared to bless the Word in the same manner as St. Joseph had done. Our Lady said that St. Joseph would come for the final Fatima apparition to give peace to the world. And he was seen to bless the Word by making the sign of the cross over it. St. Joseph is the patron saint of fathers and families, and he is the guardian and protector of the Catholic Church. Truly as prophesied by Our Lady of Fatima amidst this horrific heavenly phenomenon, Saint Joseph carrying Jesus appeared and stopped this Holocaust. The shepherd says, Lucia, Francesco, and Asinta, so Saint Joseph blessed the word together with the baby Jesus and the son. The threatening whirling mass of fire, almost colliding with the planet Earth at great speed, stopped zigzagging, and the planet Earth returned to its normal orbit, and we were saved. Astigmatist nun in Akita, Japan, Sister Agnes Sesagawa, who received messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary, which calls for prayer, especially the rosary and penance, in combination with mysterious visions prophesying persecution of the clergy and heresy within the Catholic Church. The Blessed Mother told Sister Agnes, this is strong warning. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity that has become like Babylon. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, is sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day, recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and the priests. This prophecy of Our Lady of Bakita to Sister Agnes Sasagawa is found in the book of Revelation. We read in Revelations 14, 8, and I quote, A second angel followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great, who has made all the nations drink the wine of the passion of her immorality. And in Revelations chapter 18, verse 2, we read, and I quote, And he cried out in a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Babylon has become a den for demons and a haunt for every unclean spirit, every unclean bird, and every detestable beast. And finally, in Revelations chapter 18, verse 9, this is what is written, Then the kings of the earth, who committed sexual immorality and live in luxury with her, will weep and wail at the sight of the smoke rising from the fire that consumes Babylon. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6, ends it well as it warns us, Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Sodomy is abominable before God. And if the world is already living a homosexual culture, God will punish it by fire. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, we read, if a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. In Jude chapter 1, verse 7, it is written, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going up to sodomy, are set forth for suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, this grave warning says it all. No fornicator, adulterer, idolater, thief, homosexual performer, 
will enter the kingdom of God. God who is merciful and loving always shows His compassion by forewarning us, His children, to repent and to prepare for the second coming. This was the message of the divine mercy to Saint Faustina to prepare mankind for the second coming of Christ, the Parousia. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that because of our obstinacy to sin and refusal to repent, many people will suffer a great tribulation on earth. Then it will be followed by apostasy and persecution coming from Satan, the Antichrist, who will appear in the flesh during this time. Catechism of the Catholic Church 675 reads, Before Christ's second coming, the church must pass to the final trial, tribulation, that will shake the faith of many believers. This tribulation consists in the sun being darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This too is affirmed in Matthew 24, 29. Catechism in the Catholic Church 675 continues, the persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception, offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. The Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah, come in the flesh. There are three characteristical traits of the end times before Christ will come again, as we read in Catechism the Catholic Church 675. First, the great trial or tribulation. Second, the persecution of the church that unveils Satan in the form of religious deception. Third, the Antichrist will appear in flesh. Who then will help us to remain faithful to Christ amidst these trials and persecutions that await us before the parousia? In the 1957 memoirs of Sister Lucia, she revealed that Our Lady of Fatima told her that in the last battle of God with Satan, three powerful weapons will defeat the enemy. First is the rosary. Second, the communion of reparation. And third, devotion to Saint Joseph. These three spiritual weapons will rescue the remnant church from the great tribulation and persecution against the church. To confront the Antichrist, God will send again Saint Joseph in the end times, as he had sent him with his baby Jesus and wife Mary to Egypt to cast out the den of demons on earth, dwelling there under the protector, the Pharaoh. Origen, a father of the church, informs us that as soon as St. Joseph, the Holy Patriarch, entered Egypt with the child Jesus and his Immaculate Mother, the idols were overturned, the oracles destroyed themselves, the father of lies was chained down, and the infernal spirits of darkness took flight at the appearance of the Son of Justice, though then hardly risen, an envelope in the morning garb of humanity. In Isaiah 19, these prodigies were mentioned. It said, the glory of these victories doubtless belong to the infant God, but he was pleased to achieve them by the arm of Saint Joseph as being the head of his family and guide and savior of the savior of the world. Seeing himself once overcome, the devil then began to tremble at the name of St. Joseph. But greater fear threatened Satan when he sees St. Joseph's greater merits, his sanctity, his dignity, and his power shine forth. A woman who doubled in New Age practices for wellness and good fortune placed ancient statues, which she had picked up from her many travels abroad, around her house and even on the dashboard of her car for good luck. She had seen these ancient religious statues as you enter many restaurants and groceries, and she was told that they bring in good sales. Being a businesswoman, she felt it would do no harm if she did the same. 
Now this woman is a Catholic, and she knew too that she cannot double on these ancient rites, as she was already told many times that they will for a while bring in good fortune, only to end up in greater disasters. She ignored all these warnings until one day, rushing home with her two boys, ages six and three, the woman parked her car and stepped out to see if the appointment she was expecting had arrived. As she was about to enter the door, she looked back and saw to her horror her car sliding back as it was parked on the incline. Her two boys were inside and didn't know what was happening. The woman panicked and screamed for help as she tried to run after the car, which then sliding faster and faster. She had managed to grab at the rear bumper, but it was impossible. The car was just too heavy and had gained speed as it descended. The woman panicked even more when she saw up ahead school children crossing the street as the school had just ended. The woman did what she could only do at the time. She screamed at the top of her voice, Saint Joseph, please help me. She cried and screamed for Saint Joseph's help all the way as she was being dragged by the carrying car. I humbly beg you, please help Saint Joseph, the woman cried repeatedly at the top of her voice. Then finally, to the woman's great amazement, the car went down off a retaining wall hit some trees, electricity boxes, and a big boulder near the gate of the school. The gasoline tank attached at the back of the car made a great explosion. Volunteers ran to the rescue. The woman was still down on her knees, her feet all bruised and could not walk. The only word she kept on uttering was, St. Joseph, shield them from the fire, an accident. St. Joseph was prompt. A great miracle happened. Her two boys were untouched, not even a scratch. The school children who were almost hit by the car were scared to death, but no one was hurt either. Everyone was stunned. The car just stopped and died as if someone had turned off the ignition key, just like that. After this miraculous incident, the woman threw away all her ancient statues and kept only those of St. Joseph, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. According to some who had studied the apparitions at Fatima, the vision of the Holy Family with a peaceful St. Joseph and the child Jesus in his arms seems to contrast with the events of the miracle of the sun, which the sun whirled about out of control in the sky just moments later. According to Monsignor Joseph Serencione, the future event of fire from the sky, which both sins foreshadow, has to do with fatherhood. Saint Joseph was holding the child Jesus and both were blessing the word while Our Lady of the Rosary looked on. I see in that peaceful scene a reminder of what we pray in the litany of Saint Joseph Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. And in the convulsions of the sun, I see an ominous foreshadowing of the consequences for the word, which are sure to be felt if the true fatherhood of the family is rejected by mankind. Farima has been called the hope of the word because it was there that God's unprecedented intervention in human affairs took place. For some, the miracle of the sun represents not so much a threat of evils to come, as it is more a foreshadowing of the dethronement of God, the Father, and the appalling consequences that would follow due to obstinacy and persistence to sin by majority of mankind, which ultimately lead to death and terror. The message of Fatima is still relevant for the word still caught up in a cycle of death and terror, according to Pope Benedict XVI. We would be mistaken to think that Fatima's prophetic mission is complete, Pope Benedict said. From the earliest times, he said, humanity has succeeded in unleashing a cycle of death and terror, but failed in bringing it to an end. 
It is apparent now more than ever that fatherhood has been diminished and that many see it as old-fashioned or unnecessary. Even the role of priests as fathers is challenged in society today. Yet there is no denying that the role of father is crucial to family life and to the life in the church. Can we still have hope? In the 1989 book, St. Joseph, Fatima and Fatherhood, Reflection on the Miracle of the Son, written by Monsignor Joseph Serencione, he wrote, The vision of St. Joseph and the infant Jesus, blessing the word with Mary by the side of the Son, which has not left its place, is God's assurance that though men may reject Him, God will never reject man. The noted Father Frederick William Faber, writer of Faith of Our Fathers, commented over a century ago of the notion, if God has any right to tell man what to do, these comments form far less of a prediction than the statement of an established fact. It became quite obvious when almost all the Christian governments of the world legalize abortion. In doing so, they cross the Rubicon, a decisive, irrevocable step. The almost universal acceptance of legalization of divorce, euthanasia, abortion, total birth control, homosexual union, and the culture of death worldwide has cleared the way for man to ignore completely the moral law also referred to as the natural law, which is God's law as the unaided human intellect sees the truth God has implanted in his creation. Whenever and wherever civil laws are enacted. Genetic and embryonic experimentation, in vitro fertilization, are another examples of man's ignoring the natural law. It's already with us, and the propaganda for death and dignity, a slogan for killing the aged and the weak, is heading up. With God out of the way, the weakest and poorest in our society are defenseless at the mercy, not of foreign enemies, but of their own fellow citizens. As we said earlier, Fatima is the hope of the world today because the vision of St. Joseph and the infant Jesus blessing the world with Mary by the side of the Son, which has not left its place, is God's assurance that though men may reject Him, God will never reject man. In describing the father of the prodigal son in his famous parable, Jesus was actually describing his own eternal father. God the Father is ever waiting for sinners in particular, and mankind in general, to return to him and his law. And as the principal theme of Fatima would indicate, the road by which the prodigal word will someday return to God the Father is called the way of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, symbolized by the conversion of Russia and word peace for a period. Let us repent, go to confession, attend Mass, spend a few hours of adoration, and pray the Rosary every day to have peace on earth. To the consecration to the sacred hearts of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and the communion of reparation, which is care elements, we can mitigate the great cleansing that God will inflict on mankind to save his mystical body prior to Christ's second victorious coming. Let us pray. O oh, Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O oh, Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving Father. O Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in my arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. 
O Saint Joseph, the terror of the devil, protector of the family and the universal church, and patron of departing souls, pray for us sinners, now in this great tribulation and persecution of the church. Shield us with your mantle yellow, as you shielded the holy family from idols, bandits, heat, rain, cold, wild animals, while journeying to Egypt. Shield us now from that day when the fire from the sky will rain down to purify the body of Christ from so much felt to make her again holy and pure as the temple of the Holy Spirit. We ask this to the most powerful intercession of the Blessed Mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.